Monsters in video games can be strange, but they're strange, and then there's strange. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 of the most WTF monsters in video games ever. Starting off at number 10, Cart Dog from Dusk. Now, even a twisted game like Dusk has a bit of a sense of humor. The ridiculous Cart Dog, a weird legless monster dog strapped into a wooden cart, is actually kind of disturbing the first time you see it. It's like a weird piece of archival art from PS1 era FPSs. And the thing is, the more cart dog appears, the funnier it gets. Nobody likes to see cruelty to dogs, but this is clearly a demon dog, summed up from the silliest depths of hell. It's just the right combination of creepy, gross, and totally absurd. How does it move around? Uh, maybe it's propelled by schadenfreude. And number nine is the Slappers from Final Fantasy VIII. Now, Final Fantasy VII had a load of wacky enemies, and Final Fantasy VIII cut down on that a little bit. There's a little more in terms of serious to silly ratio in the enemies of this game, but I feel like the battle mechanics of the system in Final Fantasy VIII kind of make up for the lack of silliness by being much more silly. Uh, we don't need to get into how that works, but this let's talk about this one group of enemies that always makes me laugh. During the climactic raid on the Galbadia Garden, basically the training academy for the bad guy empire, you briefly visit the school's ice rink. And that's where you take on the Slappers, a trio of hockey mask clad, well, hockey players. The masks make total sense, but the enemies themselves don't. This is the only place you ever see these guys in the game, and yeah, that makes them a totally unique surprise, but wow. Pretty much nobody out there really reminisces about the epic battle against the hockey players, but it's hard to forget them. Why? Because you're basically in a turn-based JRPG battle against the Mighty Ducks. And number eight is Just a Big Dog. Uh, this one's from Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. The Kickstarter model helped a lot of indie games get up off the ground in the early 2010s. One of those games was Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, which was back before developers really started to grapple with Kickstarter bloat. Back in those heady days, devs would toss out way too many incentives for high-paying backers, letting them include their own enemies or artwork into the game, and this led to some pretty weird out-of-place assets, to say the least. A uh, lot of portraits of different backers in their Sunday Best Gamer Trilbies. So yeah, those portraits are weird, but it's the animals that are the weirdest. You'll encounter a giant dog enemy named Puppy, and oh, it looks just like that. A, a big fluffy white dog face. It's just a face. Later, you face a beefed up version named Rocky, which is just a Rottweiler head. Um, it's not demonic in any way. It's not even really a design. Like, these things look weirdly realistic, and they aren't scary at all. Thing is, we can't even really blame Kickstarter for these things. They look like extra assets picked up in the Unreal store. And that's exactly what I'm gonna assume they are until I hear different. And number seven is the J-Sun from Super Mario Land 2. Now, that's a weird enough game as it is, uh, but let me go ahead and remind you that this this is a Mario enemy. J-Sons, uh, uh, Jason, it's, it, the word is Jason. It's, just, it's Jason Voorhees, the masked man from Friday the 13th. J-Sons are the Halloween-themed replacements for Goombas in the Pumpkin Zone. They're little hockey masks with feet and a big machete stuck straight in their head, basically referencing Jason's defeat in Friday the 13th, the final chapter. Well, let's just think about this for a second, though. There's a Super Mario enemy that's referencing a cinematic serial killer. Uh, like, the Super Mario lands were willing to play around with the established Mario tropes, but this little monster pushes the envelope. Like, I don't really know what to make of it. Uh, the only thing I really can say is WTF. And number six is Gouda from Halo Reach. Uh, in any other game, Gouda wouldn't really be unusual, but it's not any other game, it's Halo series, and Halo Reach is the final Halo made by the original developers Bungie. That also makes Halo Reach one of the most beloved entries to the series, uh, but one of the weirdest additions. The Gouda is an alien life form that exists on the planet Reach. Uh, it's just a four-legged creature with sharp teeth and claws, and it's designed in a way that makes you know that you should shoot it. 
but it's the only enemy of its kind in the entire series. Uh, the first non-covenant creature is limited to a single level, and it only appears briefly. It's also really basic, just kind of runs around, half-heartedly swipes at the player. Tons of games have basic enemies like this for filler, but why Halo Reach? Originally, environmental enemies were going to be a much bigger focus on the game to really pound home how alien and inhospitable Reach is, but it ended up getting cut down to a pretty low-key WTF moment in the grand scheme of the Halo franchise. And number five, the fetus demon from Resident Evil Village. So we've talked about the fetus monster before. It was kind of a surprise in that Capcom really set expectations for Resident Evil Village that it was going to be more like Resident Evil 4. Not quite as scary, more oriented towards action and progression of the narrative. And once we got into the game, that expectation was kind of backed up by the game. It wasn't really the scariest Resident Evil we've seen. Not that it's without scary parts, but for the most part, it's not tense in the way Resident Evil 7 was. But then you get to this. Like, there's something wrong with the place that the fetus monster exists in, and it's just immediately apparent from the moment you enter. Even so, no one expects that they're going to get chased by a big mutant fetus that looks right out of Silent Hill. Like, Resident Evil is a little campier. It does have its scary moments, like I said, but this thing is legit creepy. And they do such a good job building up to it as well. They built this incredibly tense atmosphere that eventually funnels you into this long hallway, and then, wow, you're dealing with a big freak baby. And there's not much more to say beyond that. It's a monster that will absolutely make you say WTF, just because it's contextually pretty different from the rest of the game. At number four is the Triceratops mech from Final Fantasy VII. Now, you're probably expecting Hell House, and we all love Hell House, the little house to transform into a robot warrior, which made a pretty big splash in the Final Fantasy VII remake. I mean, it's not hard to remember Hell House at all. Here's what I hope, though, that the Triceratops tank, or how it's actually known in game, the heavy tank, gets a lavish boss fight in the future in the remakes, just as the Hell House did. Why? Because it's it's one of the one of the silliest designs in the entire series. Like, if you ask your five-year-old nephew to design an enemy in a Final Fantasy game, uh, that's what it would look like. The heavy tank is uh, one of uh, just a seemingly endless cavalcade of silly and random monster designs in Final Fantasy VII. And this game just has way more than the rest of the series. I only assume the designers were just trying to one-up each other by making increasingly juvenile and out-of-place enemies. The heavy tank only appears in one area of the game, the ruined Mako reactor in Gungaga, which is totally optional. That location choice screams rejected enemy concept that got thrown in the game anyway. Uh, it's a Triceratops with tank treads. Who made him and why? And, and also, why is he so easy to kill? He's a Triceratops with tank treads. And number three is the Pagan Tree in Dark Souls 2. From Software took a big chance with Dark Souls. When the original PS3 Demon Souls came out, the idea of a hardcore action RPG that barely explained anything to you seemed like a bit of an anomaly. Nowadays, this is kind of like a staple genre of gaming. Like Star Wars has a Dark Souls type game. And when that happens, you know you've hit a bay. A big part of the appeal is the mystery. Exploration might just uncover some unique armor, a special weapon, or even a hidden area. And these games were packed with unique one-time only enemies that reward dedicated players with something interesting to discover. Uh, probably the weirdest one-time enemy, though, in the entire series has to be the Pagan Tree. This thing's only found in the Crown of the Sunken King DLC for Dark Souls 2, and it's located in a secret area that's really easy to mess. Once encountered, this weird-looking tree with, I guess, a face? Uh, it just does nothing. It seemingly has no effect. It's an enemy that can be killed, but it does not fight back. If you attack it with a whip, it really is an aura that repairs all of your equipment. Which, which, why? What? Like, somebody needs to make like a two hour lore video on this thing. And number two is Torpedo Kids, and 75% of the reason I'm picking this one is because of the name Torpedo Kids. It's it's so literal that it's it's very funny. These guys are in Resident Evil Dead Aim, and the Torpedo Kids are just a frankly bizarre addition to the wonderful cavalcade of Resident Evil monsters. Like, there's a lot of silly stuff in the grand scheme when we're talking about Resident Evil. Ever heard of the cleaners from Resident Evil Survivor? No? Uh, remember the Eliminators from Resident Evil Zero? 
there's some weird critters in these games, especially when you search deep in the spinoffs of the series. And Dead Aim is about as far down the spinoff totem pole as you can go. Dead Aim is a, it's a PS2 early attempt at the Resident Evil 4 gameplay, but done a lot worse. The main villain is a pretty great source of WTF, but you gotta give the crown to the torpedo kids. These little torpedoes with faces spawned by the Nautilus monster. Having a monster give birth to, like, babies, I guess, with weird fetus faces that swim after you like demented worms. It's weird enough, uh, without calling them torpedo kids, but that's what they called them. This name actually appears in the official notes in the game. I feel like somebody took a translation or something too literally. They're like torpedoes and they're kids because they spawn from a big monster. They can't all be winners. And finally, at number one is Devil Sonic the Hedgehog from Illbleed. T take a long, deep breath, because we are jumping right in the deep end of incomprehensibly weird video game monsters with this one. There's a game called Illbleed on the Dreamcast where you fight a giant demonic Sonic the Hedgehog. Like, there's a lot to talk about with Illbleed. It's an insane horror game that defies description. And... I'll give you the best I can here. In Ill Bleed, you play as a visitor to an evil and haunted amusement park. Your goal is to complete the different attractions and try to survive. Later in the game, you enter an attraction that literally changes your physical body, uh, swapping you into Cork Inda, which is a combination of Woody, yes, Woody from Toy Story, and Indiana Jones. After acquiring a gun, you'll fight through different stages of Toyland, and at the end of the area, you have to defeat Zondik the Helldog, a giant demonic Sonic. This monster makes short work of you. <laughs> Zodic! You cannot get away with this, you mother! Uh, I cannot tell you the whys or the hows about this. There's just a section of a video game where you play as a creepy, woody-like toy man that shoots zombies with a gun. Uh, I, I, I don't know. You don't get the gun in the other sections of the game either. This is the only section where you encounter parodies of video game characters, and like everything about it, it this is the only place that that happens. And the area is not like funny. It's just weird. I cannot imagine a weirder thing than this, actually. And it's not just Zondik that is so weird. The entire area is so, so weird. And it's not really a normal-ish game anyway. It's all weird. This is just the weirdest part. And a quick bonus for you is Joe Head Joe from The Neverhood, which was a point-and-click adventure game from way back in 1996. Everything was claymation, and it's actually a game that I think holds up pretty well. But this one boss was just completely bizarre. They clearly photographed one of their level designers by the name of Joe Sanabria and added basically a monkey exterior to it because there were enemies in the game called Skull Monkeys, and this was kind of the biggest Skull Monkey. Joe's head was the torso of this monster, and as you can see, it's totally bizarre. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks. Right here on